What's up everybody? It's Mover and today we're going to take a look at a Turkish F-16 versus a Greek Mirage. The Hellenic Air Force recently released footage of a Turkish F-16 with a Mirage 2000 over the Aegean Sea. And to get some background information, I'm turning to the Aviationist uh, article on May 5th that shows the HUD shot here. Uh, it says... The clip below was filmed by the HUD camera of a Mirage 2000 5 Echo Golf Mark II during a close encounter with Turkish F-16C Block 40 jets over the Aegean Sea. It says they were out uh, to intercept two Turkish F-16s were allegedly harassing a Greek NH-90 helicopter carrying the Minister of National Defense, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name, and his staff. I have him, says the Greek Mirage 2000 pilot who's chasing him. We'll take a look at the video here in a second, but basically the comm is Fox 2, I have him. The other one is coming, so to speak. I have him on tape, nice, stable, at gun, same. So basically he's talking about he's got a gun strack on the guy. Uh, and also he could fox to him, so shoot an IR missile. What you see in the clip, which they're explaining, is it starts at 260. I'll explain all this stuff. I don't need somebody to tell me what's going on, but this is interesting. They have their own Alessandro Gonzo Olivares, fighter pilot and IP, says it looks like a training engagement, somehow a cooperative target than a real dogfight. Well, we'll take a look at that and see. Uh, HUD symbology is in dogfight mode. You can see a constantly computed impact line of the gun as, a re as well as the stadiometric circle while hearing the tone of the IR seeker. Uh, Greece frequently claims the skies over disputed islands of the Aegean Sea are allegedly violated by Turkish jets. So I guess that's what this is all about. So let's take a look at the footage. We'll break it down and see if I can see anything that maybe is interesting or different or fun or whatever. Three, two, one, fight off. All right, here we go. Turkish F-16 locked by the Greek fighter jet. This was actually produced or put out by the Greek Air Force. So we'll watch it real time and then we'll go back and look and see what we can find. And play. It's like he's trying to get a lock. It's an IR tone. Ooh. Close, probably inside of a thousand feet there. Jink! 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 Oh no. Making Viper pilots look bad. So that's about as stable as a gun track as you're gonna get. This dude is just graping around. Oh boy. And that's the end of that tragic, tragic video. So let's go back and take a look. Uh, all right, so right here, what do we see? This is all potato imagery. So he's at 28, 21,800 feet converging at 303 knots. And I, what I think happened is he actually rolls from probably somewhere in the 30s and rolls and converges on the F-16 Pilot 6. If they were harassing a helicopter, I'm not sure what they were doing in the high 20s, but uh, this is pretty much starting at, at you know, 20, 25,000. I don't know where the Mirage was at, at the time, but uh, looks like he's pulling three Gs and it's a very easy over the top uh, maneuver. He's almost, uh, what is that? That's 70, so almost 60 something degrees nose down. So he's definitely doing some kind of split S. So right here, it looks like he's taking some kind of lock. I don't know if it's boresight. I have not done the DC, I should have read the manual. I have not done DCS Mirage yet, so I don't know the radar modes, but I'm assuming it's some kind of ACM mode that he's trying to get uh, locked on the F-16 at this point. And maybe not, maybe he doesn't want to lock him up because he doesn't want to excite the radar warning receiver. He's not trying to get uh, into that kind of situation where the guy thinks he's defensive and reacts and it actually starts a real war. Um, I don't know, but the jam in the HUD tells me that I think he's actually trying to get a lock and the, the HUD is, it's, it's, the radar is not able to do it, whether it's through actual uh, EA, uh, electronic attack, which is no kidding, uh, he's jamming, which I don't think so at this range, or there's some other, um, you know, it's just radar is just not hacking uh, the line of sight rates or whatever's going on. So uh, 310 knots, so he's really good on the energy. He's pulling 5.8 Gs and now they're through 19,000 feet. 
So he's 10 degrees nose high, and the F-16 looks like he's coming back up. So they're both, uh, he's following them up. And this guy's just, <sighs> this is a really easy shot. Going uphill, following somebody else is probably the easiest gunshot you'll ever take. Because over, your overshoot is high. There's, you really don't have a problem with uh, overshoot or Gs or anything like that because you've always got God's G over the top. It's a really easy gunshot. All right, so that's a little bit of a jink. The F-16, uh, hold on a second. Uh, he's got IR. He's not popping flares, so he's not, I don't think he really thinks he's that defensive. The, I don't think they're really taking this seriously. So the idea that it's, uh, I don't think it's training, but I think it's one of those situations where neither side really wants to start a war. So I think they both know that this is just um, kind of a mixing it up and not really, um, it's not really a fight. However, let's take a look at the F-16, because the F-16, you see these two things right here, one and two? Those are 370 gallon fuel tanks. That jet is a two bag jet, and it is not a BFM machine. The F-16 clean, formidable opponent. With two bags, I don't know where his uh, limiter switch was, whether it was Cat 1 or Cat 3. Cat 1 being full up 9G jet, it's an AOA, uh, it's a G limiter to an AOA limiter. The G and AOA limits, or the AOA limits in CAT 3 are much more extreme. I, mean, I think it's like 15 degrees of AOA uh, that it limits you to, uh, and that's to keep you from departing with CAT 3 stores. If he has a targeting pod on, he's probably in a CAT 3 configuration. If he's in a CAT 3, he didn't have a chance from the beginning. I mean, I don't know what the Mirage was, but um, I can tell you that a clean F-16 versus Mirage, I think the F-16 has no problem. Mirage is a formidable foe, but a two-bag Viper, it's tough. I mean, it's not going to be an easy fight for the Viper. So, especially at 18,600 feet, you're at higher altitude, the air is less dense. This is not a good fight for the F-16 at all, especially in a heavy Block 40 with two tanks. So it looks like he's trying to uh, get a lock again. I, I think that's what the jam means, but he's... 190 knots, 17,000 feet, 25 alpha. So he's loaded up on his aircraft, and dude, this is this is a very high starting spot for for BFM. So the the, the F-16 is not performing very well right now, and uh, he's not doing a whole a very good job of redefining the fight and getting it back into his own game plan. So that's a stable gun track. I mean, the dude's just, if he, I'm sure being an intercept aircraft, they're using live ordnance, and that might be why he doesn't lock him up because there probably has real missiles and guns on the aircraft. He's not going to squeeze the trigger, um, you know, for the small chance that he inadvertently fires a round or a missile and actually starts a war. So his IR Seeker's there. He's triggered down. The... F-16 is now, you can see with the uh, the vapes coming off the Lexus, when you see that, that is a low energy state for the F-16. Uh, he is high AOA, he doesn't have a lot of energy, and he's not really transitioning potential to kinetic energy. He's just sitting there graping around, and at this point, he, the, the, the airplane is just a pig. He doesn't have a whole lot of uh, maneuvering potential at this point. So the F-15, or the Mirage is just sitting there parked, this dude's high AOA, and I actually think at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if the, because uh, you see the speed increasing, I think the Turkish pilot actually lost sight. This looks like a, a standard student no joy where he doesn't know to get into a no sight defense and he's just kind of graping around because he doesn't know where the other guy is, he's looking, so he's just kind of easing off and letting the speed build back up. You know, because now the, the vapes are starting to go away, but he's just kind of graping around, uh, not really maneuvering in relation to anyone because he stopped fighting at this point. I think he lost him when he uh, started that nose low stuff. Uh, and here you see this dude is just completely owning him. Yeah, he doesn't see him. I don't think, I don't think the Turkish Viper sees um, the Greek pilot at this point. They're down to 13,000 feet. They might have had, they might have had some, you know, floor limit or something like that, you know, but uh, not very good BFM from the Viper. And that's the end of that. So good on the Hellenic Air Force pilot. He basically converted high to low and owned him. I mean, it's a good, he's got a good video of uh, an IR track and a gunshot. He's, he's able to 
to track him and he's he's got a, a valley gunshot and you know he, he owns the day would better pilots have done a better job probably uh would a clean f-16 have done a better job yes but uh you know you only fight what you have i think if this had been a real combat situation you'd have seen flares and you'd have seen the turkish viper punch off his tanks that would have been the first two things you'd have seen out of that whole thing because he wouldn't fight with two bags in either Cat 3 or, um, you know, Cat 1 with bags. He'd have punched those off, fought his best 1v1, and you'd have seen a, a ton of flares knowing that that guy's locked him up back there and he's, he's in a defensive situation. So I don't think either side really thought this was serious, but it did do, you know, a Top Gun-esque scare him away kind of deal. So that's pretty cool. But uh, anyway, short video on that. There's not a whole lot else to, to talk about. Uh, the, I can't wait to fly the Mirage in DCS. I think it'll be a lot of fun. But uh, boy, making my Viper look bad. You got a jank, man. Got a jank. Or getting some no sight defense or something. You can't just grape around and be a stable platform for this dude to gun you. It's just embarrassing. Anyway, so please consider supporting Folds of Honor uh, if you're looking for a good charity to support. If you're looking for a book to read for your summertime reading, uh, check out either the Spectre series, which is about F-16s, or the Alex Shepard series, which is more law enforcement terrorism thrillers. I'll leave the link in the description for all of my books. I appreciate it. It does help support the channel. And if you leave a review, that helps as well. Uh, stay tuned for some more Mover Ruins movies. The next one's going to be Air Force One. I don't know when that'll be out, but it should be soon. And then on Friday, we'll do a Mud Hen memes uh, for Fighter Pilot Friday. So it should be a lot of fun. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Excuse me. Oh, no. Oh! a lot of that. Really fine with the doors off. All hot Don't be a douche. Rule number one. Make them tell you now.